Hi, podcast listeners. Did you know the number one reason for hormonal imbalances in the body is a nutritional deficit? And are you tired of battling hormonal imbalances and trying to figure out what's going on and how to fix them? Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing my groundbreaking manual and workbook, Hormone Balance Through Astro Nutrition. I have crafted a 35-page guide that delves deep into your cosmic design and helps reveal the secrets that your body is holding to help it heal. Are you experiencing heavy periods, painful periods, PMS symptoms, PCOS, endometriosis, struggling with infertility or the menopause from hell? Maybe you have some thyroid problems going on. This is your body speaking to you in the language of symptoms and trying to tell you what it needs. With the Hormone Balance Through Astro Nutrition Guide, you can decode what your body's messages are and discover the nutrients essential for your healing. I often get asked, how do I identify the root cause of what's happening? Well, this manual has the answers. Using the medical astrology, we can figure out exactly what's going on inside of your body. And here's the best part. It's absolutely free. Yeah, you heard that right. All of my years of experience are condensed into this comprehensive guide available for download today at subscribepage.io backslash hormone astro nutrition, or you can find the link in the show notes today. You can transform your health by downloading the Hormone Balance Through Astro Nutrition Guide today and start feeling the difference tomorrow. Don't miss out on this exclusive opportunity to align with the cosmos for your optimal well-being. You and your body deserve it. So again, visit subscribepage.io backslash hormone astro nutrition or check the link in our show notes. Your cosmic healing journey begins today. My fellow seekers of the extraordinary, have you dared to venture into the dark side? If not, you're missing out on an exclusive experience like no other. Introducing The Dark Side, a members-only subscription of the Alchemy, Astrology, and Astro Health podcast, where boundaries are pushed and nothing is off-limits. Join your enigmatic host, Ayer, as she takes you on a journey through taboo subjects, holistic health, the witchy and woo, social issues, spirituality, and so much more. So what awaits you on The Dark Side? Let me tell you, exclusive podcast episodes, captivating guest speakers, live events, immersive video episodes, and a dash of mystery. And of course, yeah, we have cookies. The best part? It's just $4.99 a month. You'll unlock four extra episodes every month, plus exclusive access to live events throughout the year. That's a little over a dollar per mind-expanding episode, and you'll be front and center for live events with ire and intriguing guests. But wait, there's more. Your subscription also includes VIP access to a members-only section in the Astro Connection community. Connect with like-minded individuals and dive even deeper into the cosmic conversation. Do not miss the steal of a deal. Join Ayer on the dark side today. For only $4.99 a month, you can be part of an exclusive community that explores the extraordinary. Are you ready to embark on this cosmic journey? Click the link in the show notes today to join the dark side awakes. Come join us. Welcome to the Alchemy, Astrology, and Astro Health Podcast. I'm Maya Ratla, medical astrologist, astro herbalist, and green witch. I was diagnosed with endometriosis at 19, and I was told I would never have children. I healed my body through the power of herbs, alternative health practitioners, energy healing, and more. At 28, I had the baby they said I would never have without any interventions. I refused to believe that my body was not able to heal itself. Along this journey, I stumbled across medical astrology, and it resonated with me so much. I started down the path to learning this unique system that had been used for thousands of years in the medical community. I now help other women heal their bodies using their cosmic blueprint, the unique blueprint that every person has embedded in their DNA from the stars. This system helps me see what's going on in your body on a cosmic level and exactly how to help you give your body what it needs to heal itself. We are all uniquely and amazingly designed, and when we learn to work with our design, love ourselves for how we are designed to function, and integrate the cosmos into our lives, I truly believe that we can see true and lasting health brought into our lives. If you are ready to change your life, heal your body, and learn to deeply love who you are, this podcast is for you. Come join me as I discuss medical astrology, astro nutrition, astro herbalism, health, wellness, spirituality, transformation, and so much more. I'm so excited you are joining me.
Hi everyone and welcome back to Alchemy Astrology and Astro Health. I'm Ayer, I'm your host, and today we are going to be talking all about Jupiter. It is the largest planet in our solar system and it's a gas giant. It makes a full rotation around the sun in approximately like 12-ish years and it's the opposite energy of Saturn, which was the last planet that we talked about. So where Saturn is constricting and restrictive, Jupiter is expanding and full of growth and opportunities and abundance things like that right so let's dive in today to our awesome episode on jupiter so jupiter is considered another kingly planet like the sun so it has a more masculine quality of energy to it so it's more dynamic and active in its nature jupiter is considered the great benefic or the greater benefic depending on which text you read um whereas venus as you, if you remember was the lesser benefics so jupiter and venus are the benefics saturn and mars are the malefics so jupiter is like the jovial king of the sky right lives to bestow magnanimous gifts onto his subjects in this way we usually see jupiter like adding a benefit to someone's cosmic blueprint instead of causing issues though it has a motto of too much of a good thing is never enough so it can lead to some health concerns in the body over time i see this more so when it's in the sixth house of health uh because it's so like expanding that it just doesn't know when to stop <laughs> a lot of the issues that i see tend to come later in life because they've been bubbling under the surface but they don't crop up until some time has come like type 2 diabetes is very common with jupiter placement in the sixth house especially but in general it can be as well i see jupiter causing like i said more problems when it's in the sixth house not necessarily anywhere else jupiter also represents the area of our life where we are blessed and gifted and it has a correspondence to like work and abundance as well it is a gas giant it likes to collect moons into its gravitational field it has lots and lots and lots of moons so it is kind of a hoarder um some people believe that jupiter almost became a star but was unable to gather enough mass to produce its own light and thus we only have one star the sun in our solar system instead of two um but believe me it's not for lack of trying on jupiter's part because it is still always expanding and growing right it represents like the higher perspective in our lives the ability to radiate and expand it rules over sagittarius so talking more about like expanding our knowledge up and over the collective kind of like Sagittarius's arrow right flying high in the sky and that's a mutable fire sign and then we see it that kind of corresponding to that radiant yang quality of Jupiter right that masculine energy it also rules over Pisces so though many consider Pisces to be ruled by Neptune and that's a more modern astrology association so um I'd like to in my readings do both you know look at jupiter being the ruler of pisces as well as neptune being the ruler of pisces depending on what i'm looking for or what i'm seeing is going on right so i, I do use both but technically in like if you're doing like strict medical astrology where you're not deviating at all from like the original format of it then jupiter rules pisces right the element that we see associated with jupiter is the air element which makes sense if you think about it because it is a gaseous planet some people say the fire element can go with it as well and i can see how that might be because it was you know potentially had enough heat to almost become a star so i can go either way but i mostly associate it with the air element myself and you can kind of just see that again because if it's like ever expanding nature right and the two signs it governs, though, are like fire and water signs. But we do see a bit of association with both of those as well in some ways when you think about Jupiter, right? The glyph for Jupiter, on the other hand, looks like a number four. So like the front line that usually goes like straight down and then across the vertical line, right, horizontally, that front first vertical line, the little short one, makes like a curve to be more like a crescent shape and then it makes a you know horizontal twist over across the vertical line which is supposed to then represent a cross so it's representing the intellectual and philosophical view of things as well as the philosophy and mind which are guided by the universal mind in this we see that because sagittarius is intelligence and pisces is wisdom so we can see how jupiter's glyph actually represents both of those right 
So as I mentioned, Sagittarius and Pisces are under Jupiter's rulerships. As far as other things that it rules, it rules two separate houses as well, the ninth and the 12th, because it rules Sagittarius and Pisces. So Sagittarius rules the ninth and Pisces rules the 12th. Um, we also see Jupiter ruling over the liver as its like primary organ rulership. It rules fat production as well as the glucose glycogen conversion storage with Venus. It has some governance over the arteries and circulation due to its Sagittarius rulership. And it rules excesses in general, such as like excess in eating, drinking, alcohol mainly, not like other things, smoking, etc. Um, I do see some governance to like the thighs and hips, again, because it rules Sagittarius and some influence over the kidneys, though that's mainly a Venus and Libra thing. But this is a little bit under Jupiter as well, right? Because there is the liver and kidneys are both like the primary detoxification pathways of the body. And so these rid the body of water and fat soluble toxins by excretion through the urine and the colon via bile that comes out and gets squirted into everything during digestion, right? So we can kind of see how they do kind of tie together. So there is a minimal amount of Jupiter ruling the kidneys, though we'd be more likely to see like polycystic kidney issues with Jupiter over anything else because again it rules like growth and expansion right and so the growth of multiple cysts on kidneys would be under jupiter's rule more so than under venus we also see due to its rulership of pisces jupiter having some correspondence to the lymphatic system as well and as far as days of the week jupiter rules thursday which used to be called thor's day as thor is the Nor norse equivalent to jupiter so there you have it so it's kind of ironic I'm really seeing this Jupiter episode on Thor's day. <laughs> so it all works. It's all playing together, right? The different symbolic things that we see for Jupiter, um, a hawk or an eagle, um, mainly because they tend to sit way up high in the sky or up in the mountaintops and they kind of look all over everybody, right? They kind of look down at the earth and the collective, which is kind of symbolized by that arrow of Sagittarius flying high over the collective and you know, dispersing knowledge and wisdom, right? We also see Jupiter symbolized by like a teacher. And we see this in India in the fact that his name is Guru there. So that's kind of how they associate to like a teacher, a really well knowledgeable teacher who's been doing this for a really long time, right? And has a lot of knowledge to pass down. It's associated with the metal 10, which is like a lightweight metal. It kind of how most people think like a gaseous planet would be lightweight, right? Because it's all just made of gases. <laughs> but spoiler alert, it's not. But back in the day when they came up with medical astrology, they didn't actually realize like the weight of all of that stuff. So they associated it with 10 due to all of the gases, right? Jupiter corresponds to, um, in the tarot, the fortune card, which is card number 10 in the major arcana. Um, and as far as like other deities and things that we see um, being associated, we see Marduk, we see Zeus, um, Santa Claus has a little bit of symbolization here in Jupiter because again, it's like a person who likes to give out gifts to everybody just for the hell of it. Uh, Guru and then Thor also. Mm. As far as astro nutrition goes, right? Jupiter governs vitamin B6, biotin, colon, inositol, pangamic acid, chromium, manganese, and zinc. Since, again, he rules a lot, we're going to hit the highlights um, of this one. We're not going to uh, go over every single one of these, okay? So first up is vitamin B6. This vitamin is very important. It is needed for the metabolism of fats, carbs, potassium, iron, insulin, and the adrenal hormones in the body. It is also essential for the absorption of B12 as well. So if you don't have enough B6, then you're not going to have enough B12. If you don't have enough B12, which we talked about under Mars, then you can tend toward pernicious anemia, which is where your body just isn't making enough red blood cells, or when they do make them, they break apart a lot too, too quickly because there's not enough B12 to keep them forming properly and staying around as long as they're supposed to. So a lack of vitamin B6 can also lead to anemia in 
multiple ways because it can lead to it via the lack of absorption of B12. So it'd be pernicious anemia, but it also helps govern, right, the metabolism of iron. So if we aren't breaking the iron down appropriately in our food and absorbing it as we need, then you can get iron deficiency anemia. So B6 is very important, especially if you have a uterus and ovaries, because you bleed every month and sometimes you bleed a lot every month and that already is losing iron and everything else right that we need to maintain a good level so that we don't wind up with iron deficiency anemia so keeping vitamin b6 high in your system if you are currently a menstruating person is a good idea it's also needed for um, aiding the central nervous system activity. So if it's low, you can feel very frazzled. You can feel a lot of brain fog. You can feel really like out of sorts all the time, easily startled and just like on edge. Like you just feel like fingers are grating on a chalkboard all the time around you because your nervous system is just that like tight and wired up and overworked and overwrought, right? And it's also needed to combine with magnesium for the production of progesterone and estrogen in the body. So again, if it's too low, you're not going to make enough of those. You can end up with estrogen, progesterone imbalance in your body, which can then lead to heavy periods, period cramps, PMS symptoms, PCOS eventually, endometriosis, infertility. So it can lead to all of those things. So it's really important to keep this vitamin pie in your diet. Um, high protein diets can deplete this vitamin. Unlike the other B vitamins, it's not stored in the liver. So that's why it does. It is needed to break down a lot of stuff. And so high protein diets, which does not mean avoid high protein diets. Everybody needs a higher protein diet than we probably think we do just to help keep our um, energy up and our sugar regulated and all that fun stuff right and also to get enough iron in our bodies if you're a menstruating person so if you are eating a high protein diet though it is best to make sure that you're either taking a b6 supplement or you're getting it through your food obviously best to get it through your food daily optimal doses are 100 milligrams daily and the best food sources are egg yolks, liver, bananas, sunflower seeds, dulce, kelp, and nutritional yeast. It's best absorbed when it's taken with the rest of the B-complex vitamins. So you can get a B6 supplement all on its own, which is fine. But if you're not taking it in conjunction with the other B vitamins, you might not actually be using as much as of a, as much of it as you would like, and it's just going to be peed right out. So make sure that you're taking it in conjunction with the other ones, or to be fair, just get it from your food because all of the B vitamins come together in the majority of those things that I just mentioned. So it's just best to get it through your diet. Next one up, we'll talk about biotin. This vitamin is also needed for the metabolism of carbs, but also proteins and lipids. It has been found to reduce high cholesterol levels and hyperglycemia, which is too high of blood sugar in the body. It is synthesized by intestinal bacteria. So again, why it's so important to have a good and healthy, well-balanced gut microbiome, because that's what synthesizes it is that all that different flora and all that stuff that's in there, the bacteria, the viruses, everything that lives in that gut microbiome and its own little ecosystem, right? And it's if you don't have a good amount of that, it's not easy for your body to produce other things that it needs, like dopamine and serotonin and now biotin as well, right? So it's not really stored in the body because it can be synthesized by our body. So again, if you're working on getting that gut health back up to where it needs to be, then you might need to make sure that you are getting enough biotin in your diet daily. So they are found in nuts in general, strawberries, watermelon, brown rice, rolled oats, eggs, especially the yolks, nutritional yeast, and liver. They are best taken with the rest of the B complex and vitamin C can also help. So eat yourself some like strawberries, watermelons, and oranges, right? There you go. That gets all the stuff you need right there. Optimal daily intake is two to five milligrams daily. If you are struggling with high cholesterol levels or a high blood sugar, I would go with the five milligrams daily. And again, you can get most of that just by eating a wide varied diet throughout the day of different foods, whole nutrient dense foods, right? So start there. And then if you feel like after a few weeks of eating better and more varied foods that you're not feeling any 
much different and you're still feeling like you might need some more, then it's okay to go ahead and supplement it. But again, make sure it's a good quality supplement and that it has you the rest of the B complex with it, or you're taking it in conjunction with the rest of the B complex in some way, either through your diet or through another supplement. If you're looking for supplement recommendations, I highly recommend going to the show notes, scrolling down to my full script recommendation and clicking there. You can set up an account under my name and you get 20 up to 25% off really great vitamins and nutrients and all of that stuff that you need. I have a whole recommendations there under all the favorites that you can go look at and you can see exactly which ones I recommend. These are supplement companies that I have worked with closely. I have studied all, all of the studies that they've put out. I've read their research. I trust them over others because again, it's really hard with supplement companies. They're not required to go through as much rigid testing as other things. And so sometimes you just don't know what you're getting. These are my favorites for a reason. So highly recommend going there and setting up an account. Currently, it's for U.S. Um, residents only. Um, they don't currently let, if you live in the U.S. as the uh, like person who has the account, they don't let you uh, give recommendations to other people outside of the U.S. yet. And the fact that like, you can buy it, I can send you a recommendation, but you can't purchase it through there. They're working on it. <laughs> But yes, highly recommend that if you're looking for a supplement for any of these. Zinc is the last one that we'll go ahead and talk about. This is a mineral, and it is extremely important in the formation of RNA and DNA and for the synthesization of body proteins. It helps prevent fertility issues, and it's extremely important that you get plenty of this if you are currently pregnant and growing a fetus because the fetus is going to use a ton of this, and then you are not going to have what your body needs because your body, when you are pregnant, will always find a way to support the fetus. And if that means taking it from you and your stores and not giving you everything you need, that's what it will do. So it's very important that you're getting plenty of this in your diet if you are currently pregnant. It also, if it's too low, you can suffer from many miscarriages. If it's not it, high enough as well you can also just struggle with fertility so if you've been struggling with either one of those it's a good idea to add some extra zinc to your diet it is not anything that you can really overdo it unless you're taking like a lot a lot of it so it's pretty safe to supplement it and get it to your diet at the same time but again, if you're not certain about that, please reach out to me and we can talk about what that looks like, how much for you exactly so that you feel confident and safe in proceeding with that. It's also important in phosphorus metabolism, which again, remember phosphorus is ruled by Mars, and it's important for our immune and lymphatic health. So when levels are low, especially like if you've been sick a lot, so this depletes your levels because you're lymphatic system has been like you know having to really work over time if you've been sick recently or like that back-to-back -back sickness where it's like you get well and then like you're well for like maybe a week or two when you come down with something else this is because your body hasn't had time yet to restore all of the nutrients that it had to use to help your immune system get through the last illness and so a good thing you can do is during that illness and then after that illness continue taking the zinc the vitamin c extra vitamin d extra vitamin a ensure that your diet is back to where it should be with the nutrient dense whole foods right as quick as possible and continue taking those for a week or two past to build those stores back up but when zinc levels are low guess what happens it leads to a loss of smell and taste so if you've noticed that hey i just got over being sick and i can't smell any Anything still and I'm still things don't taste right or I can't taste them really at all or not very well it's a sign that your body is probably really low on zinc because you've burned through all of your stores so start supplementing with zinc at that case it would be time to go ahead and take a supplement and then you can work on the diet in a little bit right and then again when it's low it also leads to be on that sick not sick like never-ending ferris wheel right zinc is stored in the liver it's also stored in the eyes the pancreas the kidneys the hair your fingernails and your toenails and it is excreted in breast milk as well and is super important in helping infants immune systems develop so if you are breastfeeding just know you're going to have to take extra as well because Again, it passes through and your body is always going to support either the fetus or the infant 
over you in many cases. <laughs> so make sure you're getting enough, right? So that you're not being depleted as well. That's the one thing that happens to so many of my pregnant and postpartum clients is they're exhausted, not only because they just went through a pregnancy, a birth, and had a baby, and they're now taking care of this screaming living being that just wants attention 24-7, but their stores are so depleted from being pregnant, going through birth, breastfeeding if that's what they've chosen to do, and just trying to recover and their hormones going wacky that it's it's rough. It is It can be very rough and it makes you exhausted. So this is one of the things that I always recommend to my postpartum moms is to take plenty of zinc and get plenty of zinc in your diet right? Because especially if you're breastfeeding, your stores are going to be depleted even quicker. It's best taken with vitamin A, calcium, copper, and phosphorus. The optimal daily dose is 15 to 25 milligrams daily, but you can take up to 300 milligrams daily and that's still safe. Um, If you're breastfeeding, I would recommend to get toward the higher end of that. If you've been sick recently, toward the higher end of that, right? Foods that you can find it in, onions, mushrooms, nuts in general, sunflower seeds, organ meats, um, seafoods, eggs, especially the yolks, and nutritional yeast. So again, all good things to keep in your diet and add extras when you're not feeling well. Let's move on to the positive correspondences then. So when we see Jupiter being positively expressed in one's life, right, we really find a person that has like a really high spirit. They're super joyous and jovial and hopeful and they can have like a really deep faith which doesn't necessarily mean like a religious faith right because I don't know about y'all but when I hear that I'm always like triggered by it like you know a relationship with you know Jesus Christ so and it, it just it makes me feel like I'm back in you know that cult that I was in and like all the religious bullshit um but it doesn't mean that <laughs> in this case right it can it certainly can for some people but what it means in many cases is that it's just somebody who has a really deep faith in life and its experiences in their own hearts and they have a confidence right in their own path and purpose in life they have set goals and aspirations their mind is constantly expanding and seeking new ways to grow as they push their edges and boundaries and they are curious and exploring of life's mysteries and they have a deep faith that they understand their purpose here and can move forward in accordance to that understanding and so that's what it really means in most cases for Jupiter and that just makes me feel so much better when I hear that because I immediately get triggered and I'm like oh then I'm like read it I'm like oh okay yeah no no that's not that's not what they mean here (laughs) so in case anybody else feels that same way because I get it um these tend to be when they're living again positively expressing it they are very optimistic individuals they can always find the silver lining to anything no matter how dark of a day it is right they're filled with enthusiasm enthusiasm and positivity just absolutely surrounds them like when you're around someone who's really expressing jupiter in a very positive way in their life like you can't help but just like start smiling and laughing when you're in their presence because you can just as soon as you step into their presence you just feel that like positivity that they're radiating just like fill you right and just become like part of your essence as well they also um have minds that are more philosophically oriented and as such then they're able to synthesize information and see the larger larger patterns of relationships and this can be just friendships platonic relationships uh, co-worker relationships intimate relationships so it's all kinds of different relationships there whereas when we see jupiter being negatively expressed so the negative correspondences we see jupiter's need for expansion really affecting one's ego And this leads to them becoming extra boastful, overconfident, full of pride and egotism. The messenger soon begins to like mistake themselves with the message. And in that case, it becomes a problem for uh, many people. So Jupiter teaches us how to like learn to express our truth tangibly into the world and how to share our message. But when you start mistaking the messenger for the message, you get in the way of your message, right? And you start to think that everything's about me, me, me. And you make all of your messaging, all of your truth about like you. And it starts leaving out like the humanity of other people and you start mistaking the fact that your truth isn't necessarily just to sit there and talk about you all the time, right? That you kind of miss out on that empathy and that sympathy of connecting with other humans. You get trapped in the ego instead of 
in the spirit. It's an, it is an easy trap to fall into, though, right? So don't beat yourself up if you've noticed that about yourself when I've said this. You're going, oh, that's me. That's okay if it's you currently. This is just your wake-up call to be able to move into the more positive expression by not making everything about you and learning to be more sympathetic and empathetic towards your other human beings. When you feel the urge to say something like someone tells you a story and you feel the urge to go, well, I maybe stop for a minute, take a breath, take a pause, tell them like, oh, I'm sorry, that sounds like a really hard time. And I understand that for some of us, like sharing your story is, is a way of empathizing. But this is like to the extreme where you're like the kind of person who like every time anybody's had like a bad thing happen, you're like trying to one up them, right? You know, those people where like you tell them that you were on some trip in, I don't know, some foreign country and you got, you know, kidnapped for like two hours and finally escaped. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, well, when I went to, you know, whatever that I got kidnapped and, you know, this happened and they had like everything is like way worse than like what just happened to you and that story. Like they're you don't feel like they're actually empathizing with you. You feel like they're trying to like one up you and how bad they have it. Right. That's the type of thing that falling into the negative side of Jupiter does. There is literally nothing wrong with after empathizing with someone. Hey, that sounds really terrible. I can understand to a point because I went through something similar in my life. And, you know, I know how hard that can be. That's completely different, right? Like that is showing empathy that you're expressing it and you're understanding that, hey, I may not be exactly the same, but I went through X experience. And so I can feel to a point what you're feeling and I understand how you're feeling. Right? That's you trying to, you know, talk to someone in a way that help, lets them know you understand how they're feeling. So this is more of like the, I'm trying to one up you like the trauma Olympics. It's there's you don't get gold for having worse trauma than someone else right um we also see someone who can be really like stuck also backing up for a second if we fall into the trap of like the ego of like everything has to be about me 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 we can see this being a part of jupiter's message of teaching us about humility because trust me if you go out in the world sometimes and you start doing that whole one-up thing someone's gonna humble you real quick and that's jupiter's way of teaching you that lesson in humility so if you feel like you've been eating crow a lot recently and you've been humbled then maybe it's time to look to see how that's always happening why that's always happening and make some changes right but because if you're living in your negative expression we can see you've being really stuck and rigid you're someone who's stuck like thinking inside the box only right it can lead then to like overthinking negative thought patterns and an inability to grow as a human our number one purpose for being here right is to grow as a human and so if you get stuck in the negative side of jupiter you won't move forward or grow in this life so if one is really not connected to their truth we will see them carrying out in the world what is a reflection of their ego and then this can lead to other tendencies which feeds that ego feeds that negative like perception that you're having of things and this can show up as addiction severe judgment of others greed hoarding mainly of wealth but other resources as well right and so if you're feeling that you're leaning any of those way, the best thing first is to acknowledge that you're doing it, right? Because once we acknowledge a problem, then we can come up with solutions to fix it. And then once you've acknowledged it, the next solution is to lean more into Saturn, honestly, right? Because it's more constrictive and restricting and use that re restriction and that like, restrictive nature of Saturn to restrict some of that, like, I want to run out and one up everybody, you know, and participate in the trauma Olympics and win gold. And just, it's going to be slow, more than likely, right? Because this stuff doesn't happen overnight. You don't change overnight. But if you acknowledge it, you admit that you've, what you've been doing is not working and you want to make a change and you start taking baby steps in the direction of change, the universe will reward that and it will start slowly but surely changing and life will get better. Hor uh, bleh, can't talk today. <laughs> as far as herbal correspondences, the herbal actions that we really see here are the ones that we want to reach for to help, you know, bring more Jupiter into your life or balance out the Jupiter. The actions that we see are like having a bitter taste. It's kind of cooling and drying. It tends to radiate inward and downward instead of upward and outward, right? They can be very drying in many cases. And then the actual like terms that we want to look for are bitters, alteratives, nutritives, tonics, carminatives. So a bitter is something that just what it sounds like. It tastes very bitter. And then 
uh, bitters act on the liver, the gallbladder, and the digestive system, like in general, right? But they're more specific for liver health, which makes sense when we have Jupiter being the primary rulership of the liver. Alteratives, we've talked about those with Scorpio before, right? Um, they are the more like, we call them like detoxifying or cleansing herbs. They're obviously not detoxifying the body necessarily, but they are helping your body be able to detox itself better. And so those ones are sometimes referred to as like the blood cleansing ones because they really help kind of move things from places they shouldn't be into the bloodstream so your body can get those out through the liver, through the kidneys through the pathways of detoxification, right? Nutritives are full of nutrients, hence the name, and they are really good at helping bolster supplies of vitamins and minerals that your body is missing, which makes sense because Jupiter's all about growth and building up, right? So the more nutrition and nutrients that we have, the more we can build up the stores in our body. We can build up our health, right? Tonics are herbs that are just that. They're like a tonic to the soul, to the body in some way. They're something that provides a more specific nutrient and more specific kind of action to a very specific part of the body. So like we have um, uterine tonics, which I use a lot in my practice, which really seem to work most on the uterus and helping tone it up and get rid of some of that excess tissue so you don't bleed as much, right? And they kind of just with the sounds of it, they tone it up. Like think about like when you have like some muscle laxity. So your muscles aren't as tight and toned as you would like them to be. You kind of get the loose floppy skin. But when you start working out and you start lifting weights and you start building that muscle, that loose skin starts disappearing. It starts getting taut and tight because the muscle is growing underneath and it's filling in that loose flabby skin, right? That is what happens with the tonic in the body. Something that is having a lot of laxity or like release and relaxation in the body is now being tightened up so that it can move back to where it should be, right? Sometimes if you have an untoned uterus, a lax uterus, it can be sagging. It can be pushing on your bladder and then it can be peeing all the time. And it's really not a bladder issue. It's actually a uterus that's, you know, kind of boggy and dampened down, which can happen when you have really heavy periods. Because it's sometimes all those heavy periods, you're not losing all of that uterine lining like you should, and it builds up. And so the uterine tonics are really good for that because it helps kind of expel that and then keep toning up that muscle, which is what your uterus is, is a muscle so that it can come back up to where it should be. And then you might notice that the bladder issues disappear too. So I use tonics a lot in my practice. Um, and carminatives are um, herbs that work really well in the digestive system. And they typically help not only with digestion, but with like lots of like wind, which is like basically the old fashioned way of saying gas. <laughs> and they help get rid of that. And they help with like what we call in the herbal world wind tension, which is like a tightness that builds up in the digestive system and things just don't move as well as they should. So it kind of helps relax tight t tissues that are over tight, right? Some tissues need to be a little more loose and not everything needs to be super toned in our bodies. So which herbs do we tend to associate with Jupiter that fall in these categories, right? Um, the ones I think of the most are burdock, especially burdock root. That tends to be the part of the plant we use the most. Golden seal, dandelion, especially the root here, because the root, again, of burdock and dandelion has very bitter action, which what does that mean? It works on the liver, right? Good. So Oregon grape root as well. See another root. Turmeric, another root. Fennel, which is actually a carminative. And lemon balm, which is a carminative and a nutritive. And it helps with the central nervous system, which is ruled by Sagittarius. So you see how it has that correspondence to Jupiter, right? So let's talk about a few of these real quick. So burdock, this herb is a very effective bitter remedy. It has a great affinity to the liver and the gallbladder. It can really help cool an energetically hot liver that is stagnant and not working as well as we'd like it to, right? It helps with digestion and it helps stimulate the production of hydrochloric acid in the stomach as well as helping stimulate the bile production. So it is really great to take this about 15 to 30 minutes prior to eating a meal. And this would be any meal. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you can take this three to six times a day and you'll be good. It's best taken as a 
tea, where you make the roots into a tea, what we would call it here would be a decoction because you want to boil the herbs in the water as you're making it to really extract it because it's a hard, dry root, right? So we need to make sure that, that water is really penetrating to extract the stuff that we want. And then you want to taste it. So you want to drink it without any sweeteners in it if you can handle it. And you don't need a lot of this, like four ounces, 120 milliliters or less is fine, right? Um, and then basically take it like a shot 15 to 30 minutes prior to eating the meal. That's honestly probably the best way to take burdock root or dandelion root because they are so bitter. But in Ayurveda, me Ayurvedic medicine, you want to be able to actually taste that to make the bitter action like work better. Like their whole thing is that they want you to taste the herbs because they feel that the taste, which is actually the tongue and the salivary glands and the teeth and the chewing are actually the first part of digestion. And so to prime your digestive system for food, it's best to taste the thing first right in your mouth before it gets down to your stomach so that's the ayurvedic way that's the way that i practice it so i tend to do teas with the bitters not everybody can handle the tea so then i would do a tincture but that's not the best way though you do still taste it so it can be better than you know the tea um but you know you got to do what works best for each client so that's one of my favorite ones dandelion root can be used exactly the same way the thing is is that burdock root is actually not as like harsh as dandelion root dandelion root is really like bam i'm gonna work so uh that could be a bit too much for some people and so i usually suggest that you start with burdock root before you move on to dandelion root Oregon grape root. This is an amazing alternative. It has some antimicrobial properties as well. It's actually one of the first ones that I reach for during an illness to help my immune system out and to help my liver and my kidney start filtering any excess metabolic waste products that are being produced by my body during said illness that is trying to get rid of, right? And from my lymphatic system. So these really help clear out a lymphatic system that is struggling when you are sick. So that one's actually a really good one to use. Um, my sister-in-law had a really bad bladder infection and nothing the doctors were giving her was touching it. I gave her some Oregon grape root and a few other herbs that were really specific to like her symptoms and what was happening and how she was, you know, showing up with this presentation. And uh, within like three hours, she was like, oh my God, I feel like 10 times better. And within like two days of taking it, as I, or, I, as I recommended, she she ended up being like 100% better. And she's like, how did you do that? Like, I've been taking all this stuff and nothing has helped. I was like, I'm telling you that Oregon grapefruit is like a miracle herb. So absolutely love that one. We use it a lot in my house for us as well. The last one is golden seal. This is also an amazing herb to use during illness. I find it's really good and has a great affinity to like the bladder, the uterus, um, sometimes the kidneys too, depending on what's going on. Um, and if you take it as a tea, you typically use the root and it is very bitter. So if you're having like liver issues, um, golden seal root will probably get rid of them for you. It is very strong and very powerful though. So you do not need much of it. It's well known. It's been studied a lot for its antibacterial and antimicrobial uses unfortunately due to that fact it has been har over harvested for commercial use to the brink of extinction and is now on the endangered plants list so i don't really recommend anybody use this unless it's like absolutely necessary there is so many other herbs that you can use in place of this like the oregon grapefruit that i just mentioned prior to this um and it's because the root is used that People who aren't herbalist or who are just in it for the money of making these, you know, supplements for everybody, don't treat the plants with the care and concern that they should. Like when I'm out foraging for plants, I follow the Native American practices, which is you never take the first plant that you see and you never take the last plant that you see of the ones that you're looking for. So, like, if I was looking for golden seal in the wild, which, to be fair, is not as easy to find anymore, I, if I stumbled across one finally, I would not pick that one. Because if I pick that one, that might be the only one that's left, right? So, in the Native American way, you don't pick the first one that you see, because you might pick it, and now that's it. That's it for the plant. So, you see that plant, you thank that plant for existing and for helping and for all the stuff that it's doing for you. And you ask it to guide you to any other of its brothers and sisters that are nearby. 
when you find those, then you will pick only what you need. I'm not picking for me and everybody in the world. I'm picking for me and maybe a few clients, right? So I'm only picking exactly what I need. When people are doing this for commercial uses, because they're just thinking about the money aspect, they're not treating the plants with the respect that they deserve. And they're not treating them as the sentient beings that they are that came here millennia ago to help us. They're not respecting nature, right? And when we don't respect nature, what happens? All kinds of crazy shit. Look at global warming, right? Because we're not respecting nature and what it brings to us. So you will pick only what you need. And then when you are done picking what you need and you happen to be walking home, maybe you see another one. Oh, that's the last one you've seen. So you also don't pick that one because, again, that might be the only one in that area. And so we respect nature, respect the plants. We only take what we need. We only prepare it in ways that are best for that plant. We don't waste it if we po- at all, if we possibly can help it, right? We treat the plant with the respect that it deserves. Unfortunately, that's not happened with golden seals. So unless you're growing your own, which if you have a garden, you have a green thumb, go for it. If it'll grow in your area, grow your own, right? Um, go ahead and do that. But if you are looking to use it for an illness, I highly recommend that you ensure that it's coming from an ethically sourced place and that the manufacturer is like someone that you know you can trust that's not just slapping that on a label to make you buy it but is not truly doing that or you find a local like herb farm near you that is growing it ethically and harvesting it ethically in a way that this is the kind of farm that you go to buy things and they're telling me oh we're sorry we're out of stock of that until next season meaning that they only harvested what they felt they were going to need for the year and they have not over harvested that plant that's a good way to know if they are constantly running out of your the herbs that you want and you can't get them until next season that's a that's a good place my recommendation is oshala farms they're in oregon in the u.s so if you're a u.s uh you know based listener that's a good place to get from i'm not sure if they ship internationally you would have to ask them if you live out of the states but um I get a lot of my herbs from them. They really obviously try to grow mainly local stuff. So it's really only stuff that grows like locally in Oregon. But I get my Oregon grapefruit from them. (laughs) And I get um, my wild oats from them. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Alchemy, Astrology, and Astro Health. I hope you enjoyed today's episode as much as I enjoyed making it. You can find all relevant links to today's show in the show notes below. If you loved the show today, please subscribe, follow, and leave me a review. I love to hear your thoughts and it helps me know what is a hit and to make more of that content, especially for you. If you want to learn more about me and how I can help you, head over to atlaastrology.com. There you can sign up for a medical astrology package, download my free sun sign in your health ebook, read the blog, and so much more. If you want to connect more outside the podcast, follow my Instagram channel at Atla Astrology or join my Astro Connection community, the link to which you can find in the show notes. Until next time, love and light.